Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Discworld video. One of my favorite series to talk about here on the channel, and one that I have not had the time to make enough content on, and it makes me deeply sad. But we, the Discworld fans, are in the middle of the post-mediocre adaptation haze where someone attempted to adapt one of the most iconic storylines from Discworld, and it was received mixed. I don't think the watch was bad if you especially weren't coming in expecting Discworld. I think it had quite a bit of charm to it, but as a Discworld adaptation, it lost a lot of what made the characters so deep and interesting and more of the philosophical undertones that continually play throughout all of Discworld. And what you just ended up with was a fun kind of plucky fantasy punk thing that I've gotten a little more fond on as I've gotten distant from it. But it has been gnawing, begging the question of me, if money was not an option, what would be the best possible Discworld adaptation. And in this video, I would like to pitch my vision of that to you, the fans, to then debate about in the comments down below and let me know just how wrong I was. Now, I am assuming a couple different things for this. One, budget's not an issue, though I'm gonna talk about how I don't think certain things need to go and have a ton of money, but whatever. I'm just gonna be picking the people I think are genuinely the best possible choices to helm this project, mainly because of the tone, the presence, whatever they bring whether they're actors, directors, etc, etc. Now, finally, I know Berserk fans were expecting another Berserk review today, but with the rather incredible news we just had, I kind of already did a Berserk video this week, and I have a lot of fandoms I'm trying to feed, so for now, we're gonna slip on in over to Discworld and begin our perfect Discworld adaptation right now. So I think the most important thing for any Discworld adaptation to be successful is absolutely bringing in Neil Gaiman to consult. Not only did he work directly with Terry Pratchett, but Neil Gaiman is a caliber of creative that to me can fully understand and grasp what it would require to translate from the pages the true spirit of Discworld to the screen. I need that to be excited about a Discworld adaptation again. I know Neil Gaiman is extraordinarily busy and I don't know if he would sign on, but in the perfect pitch I'm trying to go for, absolutely Neil Gaiman needs to at least be involved in a producer level. But that brings us to executive producer and or director, and that is going to quite naturally slip to someone. I think anyone who's been following me on Twitter knows I think is the right person for the job, and it's going to be Taika Waititi. This is going to be a show in my pitch, actually a series of mini series, and I would demand require Taika Waititi come in and executive produce and at least direct a few episodes at the beginning to help establish the tone. Because because this man, as a director, has pretty much already brought us the best Discworld adaptations that are not Discworld adaptations. He's essentially the Mike Flanagan to Stephen King. Taika Waititi is able to bring a levity to incredibly deep and emotionally compelling stories that fits nearly exactly in with the tone of Discworld. Case in point would be projects like Our Flag Means Death, which he is heavily involved with, or more importantly, Jojo Rabbit, which is something that he not only acts in but directed and wow is that probably the best comedy of the last decade and also made me cry the hardest of pretty much any movie of the last decade as well as Taika Waititi has worked with many actors who bring a caliber and seem to enjoy working with him that I think it would be easier to get those people involved with this adaptation I'm pitching so yes in terms of who is in the top control level and then having their effects trickle down I need Neil Gaiman's voice being listened to and Taika Waititi taking that advice and turning it into a Discworld adaptation. Now, I said I'd like this to be a show, not movies, but more specifically, I would like it to be a series of mini series where you kind of just go, okay, for the first season, we're gonna do death. Second season, guards. Third, the witches, and continue on from there. I think that's really the only way you could capture the truly expansive feeling the world of Discworld brings to the table and is oh so important to its success, while also continually pulling elements from each series into the next, and you can just build on top of each other. Bring in different characters to appear in different series, and each season is kind of just handing off the spotlight to whoever needs to take the spotlight for that season. But you can bring in, of course, Death and the Guards Guards storyline 
and the witches one and all that and it really allows for a lot of fun and play for developing these characters in how the books actually handle them. The thing that kind of occurred to me while I was recording this is there doesn't need to be that gargantuan a budget for the visuals of Discworld. Something that I think would be quite attractive to a lot of streaming services and things like this to adapt it because the more schlocky aesthetic would be completely fine. No one would want this to look at like the grand epic Lord of the Rings Game of Thrones and something more in vain of yes our flag means death would be fine. Discworld fans aren't looking for the most hyper realistic gritty interpretation of death. Something that is in the vein of what we saw with the watch is all right. The visuals of that were not what people were complaining about so I actually think that's absolutely okay. Which platform gets it is actually more difficult to consider than I originally thought. The only two I can immediately throw out the window are Netflix and Amazon. Amazon has been very hit or miss. They've had some really great adaptations, but nothing anywhere near the vein of Discworld that has been a success. So I'm just gonna say absolutely not there. And Netflix is just going through so much. Uh, that's a toxic pile of sludge and I don't want Discworld anywhere near it. So what that really leaves on the table for me is Hulu and HBO and HBO already has a Taika Waititi project with Our Flag Means Death, which if you have not watched it, is absolutely fantastic and does have a very Discworldian tone in some ways. If you want to see absurdist pirates loosely based off someone who actually existed, fantastic way to go. Hulu though has actually been continually putting out better and better content and as well as they are the host right now of What We Do in the Shadows, another Taika Waititi involved project that feels very Discworldian. Do you see the point I'm getting at? So it could really go to either one of these streaming services and I just definitely wanted on a streaming service because traditional television, that's old school. But this freedom streaming service is allowed, I also think would be very crucial to allowing this mini series-esque formula to work because they don't have to have the traditional runtime lengths and limitations and they can have a lot of flexibility for making sure each story comes to the necessary conclusion. And what I like specifically about having a streaming service handle it is yes, you do a season for the death books, but a lot of those books are really short and I think you could get them in an episode that's an hour and 15. Not exactly feature length, but bigger than your standard show and that freedom which I require in my perfect pitch would really allow each story to tell itself without feeling constrained or constricted or bloated and trying to stretch it out to meet some feature length crap. Let's be honest, Mort would not need to be an entire two hour movie. But that brings us to the oh so fun portion of casting. Now, casting Discworld, I could sit here for an hour and a half and go through character after character after character after character after character after character. It's 42, 41, 40, it's 40 some books and I can't do all of that. But I have taken some of my personal favorites with some choices I think may be very popular or somewhat controversial. And I am demanding you, the audience, come back with your own casting for some of your favorite Discworld characters in the comments down below. Now let's go ahead and jump into the first one here, starting with my personal favorite fantasy character in existence, Death. I went through so many actors to play Death that could bring the right maturity, gravitas, and presence while also still having a bit of meekness to them, a bit of uncertainty. I mean, the Death stories are him kind of fumbling through his position in the world and going through these existential crises. I need someone who can strike that balance. And that's a really nuanced, difficult balance to hit. And where I decided to land was actually Jeremy Irons, who is still working to this day. And in terms of what he's able to bring to the character, I think it would line up just about perfectly. There's some schlock and camp within Discworld, and Jeremy Irons, if you've seen Dungeons and Dragons, can absolutely do that. In terms of gravitas, it's Jeremy f***ing Irons' voice. He's perfect. And when it comes to experience and maturity, the man's got it. But maybe more importantly than all of that, I want the actual performance of Death to feel somehow different than the rest of the cast I'm gonna bring to the table. And I think that's what makes Jeremy Irons the perfect pitch because he's very Shakespearean in how he approaches nearly every performance I've seen him in. And that is what Death should be, contrasting what I would like to see an actually more modern interpretation of performances for pretty much the rest of the cast. I think Discworld always kind of felt a bit ahead of its time and the trends for performance we're seeing now really do line up with the quippy, smart, clever dialogue that Terry Pratchett's been writing since essentially the beginning, but not necessarily death. And that little subtle, maybe even you can't even notice it right away, but it definitely builds in the back of your mind uh, presentation of the difference between, you know, an immortal god-like character and mortals would be a superb choice, in my opinion. But now we must talk about Granny Esme Wallowax, who is 
maybe the most badass character that Discworld has to offer. And again, this is reaching a little bit. We're gonna get to some more niche castings for people who aren't quite so famous in a minute, but I've always just pictured Elena Bottom Carter for this. It may not be the exact right fit for the descriptions, but I think she is the exact right presence, persona, everything to bring this character to life. And she's someone who can come across as a witch who's standing on the outsides of society, but not exactly filling in for what a witch is. And it's just a level of quirk and mystery and death to even her most just tiny appearances in films that I think she would be a glove hand perfect fit, and I don't think I need to justify that much more. She's just the one to go with. But what would Discworld be without the reportee? And that is going to be Satrisma Kristok. I don't know why I'm deciding to say the names like this, but I'm gonna do that now. And I'm actually going to jump on over to one of my favorite shows from the UK of recent memory, and that is going to be Sex Education. And more specifically, Emma McKay. This character is supposed to be someone who is extraordinarily charming, somewhat manipulative, and very beautiful. And I think Emma McKay checks all of these boxes and oh so much more. Plus it's quite a bit different than the role we saw her in for Sex Education, but definitely feels like a good fit within her wheelhouse. She is young, absolutely can bring the energy and the charisma that this character needs while still not feeling like the level of presence and gravitas you get from someone like Jeremy Irons. I'm trying to well round out the world through the casting here and I hope you appreciate the effort. This world is about having something that's really fun, poppy, and entertaining on the surface and then down below a whole lot of thought behind the choices made. She's also done with sex education so if somehow Taika Waititi or Neil Gaiman sees this video and decides to go this way I think she's available, go right ahead. And then there is Colin the Barbarian, who is a old school barbarian type who has realized there's no retiring for the adventurer. It's almost kind of Legends and Lattes, but they didn't get to open the latte part. And I wanted to go through a bunch of 80s action stars who are maybe in a similar position, but still acting. And I was going through lists of names going, no, of course not Arnold, not Sylvester, blah, blah, blah. and I came across Carl Weathers, who just seemed like the absolute right call to me. Carl Weathers is someone who has given really solid performances his entire career, but is still absolutely working. And he used to be one of these muscle guys appearing in movies like Rocky and Predator, allowing him to just evolve into essentially what Cohen the Barbarian was. He seems to still be in pretty good shape and able to bring a level of energy and snark that absolutely fits into Cohen the Barbarian. And uh, yeah, that just seems like a really great way to go. He's not so big that it would be absurd to get him. He had his heyday, like the character he's embodying, but still continues down the career he's on. Whether it's out of enjoyment or necessity, I'm not sure, but it feels like he could easily flip that switch over to necessity and embody this character to a T. The granddaughter of death, Susan Stahel. Okay, I need to stop that. It's really bothering me now. This is going to be Anya Taylor-Joy, which is another superstar pick right now. She's one of the biggest up and coming actresses out there, but after her performance in The Northman and Last Night in Soho, things like that, she's just the level of mystique, beauty, like maturity, yet youth that comes together to allow someone to feel like they are possibly the like, granddaughter of death. If you disagree, fight me. But if we're talking about people involved with death, I wouldn't be able to walk away from this without getting into Mort, who would be playing a not as substantial role as some of these characters, but a vital one in terms of setting up so much of the themes for what is then explored throughout that entire series. And I think we actually could just go into Taika Waititi's back catalog and pull someone out who would fit right on in, and that would just be Roman Griffin Davis, who was the star of Jojo Rabbit. This young man's performance in Jojo Rabbit was absolutely flooring, and a few years on from that, he is the perfect age right now to be Mort. Every time I rewatch Jojo Rabbit, what this child was able to bring to the screen and actually come across extremely convincingly is beyond impressive. And having someone who can be the insecure yet ambitious and easily captivated Mort, that is quite translatable to what we saw in the performance from Jojo Rabbit. I've seen things like Tom Holland for this, which one, he's too old by a lot. I want someone who can still genuinely feel like a kid. And that is where I think Roman fits right on in while still being a talented actor. Rincewind, the coward of all coward wizards. And I've also just always had someone in mind whenever I pictured this character. It does not necessarily fit the book description, but it's always just felt oh so right to me. And that would be Nick Frost. I think Nick Frost would embody this character spot f 
fucking on. And I'd love to see what he could bring to Rincewind, who's a surprisingly deep character and a fun embodiment of a trope that exists in many different stories. I mean, that's really where Terry Pratchett shined as a character writer for me in a lot of ways. He would take tropes and then expound on them or twist them in ways where you get something you don't expect at the end of the day. And Rincewind's someone who needs to be able to have that surface level, <laughs> but underneath a lot of personality, a lot of human, almost sympathy from you. And Nick Frost absolutely can kill that. If you don't think too highly of Nick Frost, I recommend you check out the criminally underrated Into the Badlands. It was a show that got a couple seasons and he really shined in it. Moist von Lipwick! That's, again, I'm gonna be someone who can just shoot back into Taika Waititi's back catalog and go the perfect embodiment of this would be Sam Rockwell. Do I even need to debate that further? I think just Sam Rockwell, yes, right? We all agree, Sam Rock, yeah, okay, Sam Rockwell. He's, yeah, moving on, that's just done. But I could not talk about casting Discworld characters without getting into Mr. Vimes, Samuel Vimes. And uh, this is, Hard. Sam Vimes is someone you see probably the most fan casting for online, and it's really difficult to pick just one who would be the perfect embodiment because there's so many different approaches to this jaded, surprisingly deep, ironic commander who's anti-authoritarian and ends up with, you know what I mean? I kind of really liked when I saw someone say Hugh Laurie, but I also think there's some things there that clash and don't feel quite right for me. And where I found myself landing was actually Jerome Flynn, who is best known for his role in Game of Thrones. Sam Vimes needs to have, in my opinion, a little bit of that manic energy, but not quite the level of smarminess you get from someone like Hugh Laurie. Don't get me wrong, he's a smarmy guy, but it's just the packaging around it doesn't feel quite right. But what this guy was able to bring in Game of Thrones, as well as a really strong appearance in Black Mirror and of course Ripper Street, I think he's the perfect Vimes. And he kind of just fits in the look I've had for Vimes as well, a lot stronger. So that is my choice for just a plethora of Discworld characters for their castings. And this is largely what I see being the best possible outcome for an adaptation. Do I think we'll actually get something like this? No. It'd be great if we did, but I don't think we will. What I would love for you all to do though is leave in the comments down below your perfect Discworld adaptation from producers, directors, writers, cast, let me know because I'm really curious to see where I'm wrong, where people think, no, 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 this is the better interpretation. Upvote the people who you think are making far better choices than I am. That's interesting to me. I love the discussion. But anyway, y'all, like and subscribe if you have not already and hit the Patreon if you wanna support what I do here. I got books, I got merch, and I have one of the best audiences on the internet. I love y'all. Have a good one, bye.